Hello everyone, welcome to FiddleSec. Have you ever been curious about how C structures are arranged in memory and how as a reverse engineer you can parse and even manipulate their values? If so, you are in the right place. Here we have a structure of a person with three fields, int age, character gender and float height. In memory, this will be represented something like this. When a program is executed, the operating system's loader take charge of loading the binary into memory. During this process, it allocates memory for global variables, stack frames, heap allocations and any structures used in the program. One key concept to understand is how structures are stored in memory. A struct in C is simply a continuous block of memory. That means all its members are laid out one after another in memory and the structure's own address is the same as the address of its first member. Here, let's say the person structure is loaded into memory starting at address hex 1000. The first field in this structure is age, which is of type int, and on 64-bit systems, including ARM64, an int is 4 bytes long and must be aligned to a 4-byte boundary. So, age starts at hex 1000. The next field is gender, which is of type character and a char only needs one byte and has no special alignment requirements. So it is placed immediately after age at address hex 1004. Now the final field in our structure is height, which is of type float. And just like int, float also takes four byte. But another thing to observe here is that float typically requires four byte alignment for efficient access. So even though the next available address after gender is hex 1005, placing a float there would violate the 4 byte alignment rule. Therefore, the compiler inserts 3 bytes of padding after gender so that height starts at the next 4 byte aligned address which is hex 1008. Okay? To keep this video short and simple, let's create a small C program and name it as person struct.c hash include stdio.h here we are going to define the person structure struct person uh, it has three fields first one is integer age second one is character gender and third one is float height and then let's define a new function called print person which is going to be responsible for printing all the values of each field inside this structure. So let's take this structure as its argument. And then to print the values, we have print f function. First field is age of type integer. Second field is gender which is of type character and then finally the third field which is height this is of type float so i am going to print it up to two decimal values okay simple now let's move on to the main function here we will create and initialize this person structure so the first field is age, let's assign age as 25. Then the second field is gender, let's put as M. And then the third field which is height, so let's put 5.9 as height. Then the final step is to simply call this print person function where we will pass the address of this structure and then let's simply return. That's it, let's save this program and build it using GCC hyphen O name of the executable person struct and then the input file which is person struct.c enter no errors means the compilation was successful and if we have a look we should have this person struct executable let's try to run it first to make sure it's working correctly dot slash person struct and it's printing all the three fields of this structure as expected all right perfect now looking at this from a hacker's perspective Let's say we have access to the compiled executable. Our goal is to identify where these values are stored in memory and potentially even modify them during runtime. So our first step would be to see the disassembly of this binary 
and for this i am going to use radare command line dis disassembler this time if you are following along feel free to use any other disassembler of your choice such as ghidra or ida i am going to load it into radare using r2 followed by the name of the binary which is person struct enter once the binary is loaded in radare we can tell it to analyze using aaaa command now the analysis is also done let's list out the functions present in this binary using afl command and these are the functions which are present in this binary here we can clearly see the main function which serves as the entry point of the program along with print person for simplicity i haven't stripped this binary that's why the function names are visible but in real world scenarios binaries are often stripped so you would need to identify functions manually by analyzing the disassembly okay for now let's just see to this function using seek command followed by the function name enter and the cursor is now moved, moved from 5 to 8 to 4b0 where this print person function is present in this binary now to see its disassembly we have pdf command and radare has generated this nice disassembly for us now because it's a sample binary and we already know its source code we know that this print person takes one argument which is of type struct person right and in arm64 architecture the first argument of the function is always stored into x0 register and that is why if you observe this disassembly at the beginning so this is the functions prologue which is responsible for setting up the stack for the function after that we have this str instruction where the value of the x0 register is being stored on the stack right this means that the address where person structure is located in memory is being stored onto the stack. After that, we can observe that address of the person structure is stored into x8 register. And then that value is being used indirectly in this printf statement to access different fields of that structure. Okay, but don't bother about that. To parse a structure, all we have to figure out is where the address of the structure is. In this case, that address is stored into x0 register. So with this information, we can start building our Frida script to inspect and interact with the structure in memory. For this particular application, we can attach the hook directly at the function print person by using the name of the function because obviously the binary is not stripped. So Frida will be able to identify this function by the name. However, in real world scenarios, you will not find the function name and that's why instead of attaching the hook directly onto the function using the function name i am going to attach the hook at the instruction level directly okay so let's open another terminal and create a new frida script called parse struct.js okay inside this first we have to figure out the base address where the binary is being loaded by the operating systems loader when we execute it for that let's create a variable called module name where we will put the name of the binary which is person struct right then we have to figure out the base address but for that obviously we first need to get the module object which contains all the information about the binary after it is loaded into the memory so for that frida provides us with the api called process dot find module by name and this takes one argument which is the name of the module or the binary in this case it's module name so let's pass it over here and store it into a variable called module object okay so now this module object is basically containing all the information about this person struct binary including the name of the module the base address and the size now we want to print its base address first using console.log i'm going to put a log which says module object dot name so this name attribute will print the name of the module which is obviously going to be person struct right but just to keep things dynamic i am going to print it through this module object so module object dot name is loaded at module object dot base so this base attribute will print the base address where this binary is loaded okay so now we have the base address of the binary let's attach the hook at this instruction which is present at this offset right but note here 
that Radare added its image address to the real offset. So the real offset here is 4BC. Okay. And to attach the hook, Frida provides us this interceptor.attach API in which we have to pass the address of the instruction where we want to attach the hook so obviously uh, we have the offset of that instruction where we want to attach the hook which is 4bc but this is just the offset not the actual memory address in memory when the binary is executed right so for that reason we have first identified the base address and then we will add that offset to this base address to get the actual memory address so let's add it a module object dot base dot add x 4 bc right then the second argument of this function is a function body and here we can first of all print a log for troubleshooting purpose which says print person and inside it i am going to print the address of the structure and like I said, the address of the structure is stored into this x0 register. So inside the hook, we can access this register value using this dot context dot x0. So this will print the address of the structure person. Now that we have the memory address where the person structure is located, we can start accessing its individual fields. And as mentioned earlier, the first field resides at the address stored in the x0 register. However, before reading any value, it's important to know the data type of the field. In this case, the first field is an integer. So we can read the first four bytes of that address to retrieve the value of the first field of the structure, right? Luckily, Frida offers built-in APIs to read various data types from memory. Let me just first of all put another log where I'm going to print the value of the first field, which is age equal to and then we have to read first four bytes from this structure address right for that if we want to read an integer value we can use frida's memory dot read int method and this method takes this address as its argument so basically from this address it will read first four bytes of the memory and print it in the form of an integer okay now to read the next field we have to add four bytes to the starting address of the structure right so again let me just put this log and the second field is gender then we know that gender is of type character but there is no such method called read care in frida so we have to read it in the form of a string using memory dot read c string okay and again this method is going to take the address from where you want to read the string and here we want to read the second field of the person structure which is x0 dot add x4 right because this x0 is pointing to the first field of the structure and age is of type integer which is four bytes long so to read the next field, we have to add four bytes to the starting address and that will give us the second field of the structure, right? Then to access the next field, which is height of type float, we would typically add hex one to this address, right? Since the previous field gender was of type character, which is one byte long. So theoretically, if we add one byte to this address, we should get the third field or the next field in the structure, right? However, remember the four byte alignment rule I mentioned earlier. The next field is a float, which must be stored at an address that is multiple of four. So instead of just adding one byte, we need to add an additional three bytes. This padding ensures the total offset becomes 4 bytes, aligning the memory properly before reading the float value. So inside this console log, to read the float value, we have memory.readFloat method. And then let's first of all add 4 bytes. And then we have to add another 4 bytes to it to get the height. And now this address should point us to the height field inside the person structure. If there was no alignment rule, instead of adding four bytes, we would have added one byte only. Okay. All right. We are nearly finished with the script. Let's go ahead and save it. And now let's run it to check what values we are getting inside our hook. 
so i have to first enable my environment and now to launch the binary using frida we have frida followed by hyphen l which takes the frida script which is parse struct.js followed by hyphen f to spawn a new instance of the binary and the name of the binary is person struct enter and in the output we can first of all see that it's printing the base address of the binary so our binary person struct is loaded at this memory location all right then these values which you are seeing here these are the actual values of the structure which are being printed by the executable itself remember there was that print person function which was printing the values so these values are coming from there and then this is our hook so these values which you see here these are coming because of our hook so first of all we can see that it's printing this log print person struct and then the memory address so this location is the location where our person structure is located then it's printing the age which is 25 perfect gender male perfect then the height which is 5.9000 something okay so if you round it up up to two decimal you will get 5.90 which is exactly same as this value now that you understand how to read values from a structure in memory you can apply the same logic to modify them as well let me quickly show you how you can modify this gender field of this person structure so let's again open the frida script parse struct.js inside this what i am gonna do is i am going to modify the gender field which is pointed out by this address right so what i can do is i can first of all access this address using this context x0 adding four bytes to it so this address is now pointing to gender field right and then to modify this value fortunately frida provides us with a method called write utf8 string using which you can directly write data in the form of a string or characters okay so i am gonna put f over here and that's it right now we should get gender as female let's save it and launch the script again and you see at the beginning also the gender is now f earlier it was m and rest of the values are as it is of similarly you can modify other fields of the structure as well now before ending the video let me quickly recap what you have to keep in mind when passing a structure in memory first you have to know the structure layout in this case we already know how the structure is second point is you have to know the data types of each of the field of the structure in this case we knew that the first field first field was of type integer second field was of type character third field was of type float and then third and most important rule is to respect the alignment rules in 64 bit operating systems memories are mostly four byte aligned okay all right if you found this helpful consider dropping a like and subscribing for more reverse engineering and memory hacking content see you in the next one